welcome back to my channel. This is the 22nd vlog in the series of the build of my model and skill train track. If you want to follow me in the whole process of building this table, please consider to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to get notified for further videos. So it has now been dried, so let's see what the result is. Let's remove the clamps. And the last one. So the top one was the, the one which already was finished. So let's see the result. Yep, so it fits. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a center line. Sort of. So I'll put this one away. Next. the last one. So it's five layers. So this was one which I already finished before. So as mentioned I already put some drawings here on this board where the, where the uh, helix comes from. So let me put one over here so it's almost the right angle. So this section will be high and this section will be low. So I made some marks here, as you can see. Those are the marker lines, they're all around, where we need to put some extra height in between. So I'm gonna make some marks here on the board. So, now these marks are where these studs come, so the extra pieces to rise or lower. So, so it looks like these are, is it 16? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 pieces. So and we need to rise so that the train travels through. So the same what I did with the uh, incline and decline on the main track. I'm going to use these studs. So this is level 3, 6, so that's the height of the rails, so this 6, um, this will be 9, so if I count it, this is point zero. so one stud needs to be here, two here, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen here. So sixteen times three millimeters is forty-eight millimeters. The distance here. 
This block is a little bit higher, so I will be using, first of all I will be using these and then I will compensate with smaller pieces. So I'm not going to show you all, the whole glue process, but to give you an idea, so this is zero, one, two, that's three, this would be four, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. So this is the height here. I'm gonna not I'm not gonna put it over there because if this is the center line of the track. The tracker is traveling here, so I need to make sure that I have clearance until here. So what we're going to do, we're going to use a stud over here and not over there. But so these will not be positioned over here, but this will be the one which is going to be here, so that we have the right height. So that the train can travel easy that way. So the train will travel that way. Because this is the front helix and I will build a back helix as well where the track goes up again. And I will show you later in a new plan on how the track will be extended with two turnouts uh, on the main track. So I need to adjust the main track a little bit so that I can use the helix to have the train travel in and the train travel up. I did a calculation for the train travel and with the speed on a video which I already posted on Facebook where the train can be seen uh, traveling uh, um, on the main track. So the reason why I'm using a helix is because of the traveling of the train. So the main track is 13.2 meters. Sorry for the people which are not in the metric system, but I keep doing it in the metric system. 13.2 meters. I calculated with a regular speed, average speed, it takes one minute to have the train travel on the main track completely round using both tracks. So the helix in total is approximately 21 meters and that is 9 meters for the descending and 9 meters for the ascending and then we have a one and a half meter uh, to go to the descending helix and one and a half meter you go to the ascending, if I come from the ascending helix back to the main line. All this together will cause that the train travels a little over one three quarter of a minute in the helix. I can easily stop the train within the helix and then let him sit there, let, let trains run on the main track and later on it comes back, sort of as a storage yard. So this is the extra time when running from, one, uh, for, from the railway station back to the other railway station to get it in. However, I'm gonna use a different technique than just the DC analog transformers like this one. So this is a regular DC transformer and it is now connected to the track using a specific speed. So it's... Uh, um, then the train will run that speed. But the problem is that I cannot fine-tune it uh, completely for the train. So I'm going to use a H-bridge motor driver. This will put pulses on the track for a DC motor to get better control. I will show you that in a check tips, which probably uh, is already uploaded, on how to control a DC train 
so an analog train, to run on a track with the H-bridge motor driver. The H-bridge can be fine-tuned in lower speed and still have the train enough force to drive. If I just put a regular voltage on it, what it does is the following. If this is a voltage diagram, then usually what you put on is a direct current voltage. So this is 12 volts and this is 0 volt. So to have the train run a specific speed, what you do is you put just a regular DC voltage, continuous voltage on it, and then current is drawn. And the lower the voltage, so let's say you put the lower here, the less current. But the problem is that the train itself has a fallout at a certain voltage. So with the H-bridge motor driver, you have again the 12 volt DC and zero volt. Instead of putting a certain level, so let's say seven volts on the track, what you do with the H-bridge motor driver, you put pulses on it. So the maximum voltage is 12 volt. That would be here. So you would be putting pulses on it. So there is a certain duty cycle. So if this section here has the same as this, so let's say this is um, uh, so it's 50% each, 50% each, so that the voltage is put on the track and there is no voltage, then that would average into 6 volts. But the motors will get pulses of 12 volts, which means you can control the motor better. That's actually what is done with a DCC control train as well, except there is a whole digital technique in front of it, which means in the decoder of the DCC, there is DC coming out of it in pulses to control the motor, in which you can better control so if the, the on time is a quarter, so this is 75% off and this is 25% on, then that means that the average DC voltage on 12 volt, the average will be approximately 3 volts. But the motor will get 12 volts, but then in pulses. And so you can easily um, run the train. The nice thing about this is, as, is also that when doing that with the 8-bit driver, you will put power on the track if in case the motor does not act upon a 2 volts or one, let's say 1.5 volt and still the pulses are there, the lights on a train will still be lit. So you see that the train still has power but is not running ex uh, unless it is higher than a certain voltage. So the advantage of the 8-bridge is then that you still will see that the train has power, but it doesn't run. You increase the on pulses and the off pulses are lower, then the train starts to travel. And then you can have the train in a smoother run, which means that I'm able to descend or ascend on a helix or on the main track to the, that the velocity of the train uh, gradually is there instead of putting a regular straight voltage on it. And I have the benefit that with some trains or with some uh, wagons which I have, there is lighting lights in the wagon and they still be lit. They will be lit in a lower than on high speed, but they still will be lit. So you will see that in a tech tips, which I probably already posted, but that is what we're going to do uh, within the helix. And then the travel time within the helix will be longer than those one three quarter of a minute because it's better controlled. So that I can have the train a minimum away from the track for let's say five minutes. I can even put the train on the straight here uh, away from it. So I'm going to show you one finished section of the helix. So there's this area. So the track is on there. I'm gonna put wires on each section of the helix. So this is one section. Will be one power section. So I have power sections in the helix. Five power sections in the helix for the descending section and five for the ascending section. And now I have just regular uh, conductors connected here. I will be using insulators to get to the next level. So each individual section will be powered. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these videos and hit the bell icon to get notified 
for next videos to come and I will see you in the next video. Thank you and goodbye.